Welcome to the first of two C1 media screencasts looking at ownership and control of the mass media. And this is the first of two screencasts on this particular topic. And in this short video we're going to look at changing patterns in the ownership of the mass media, focusing particularly on a concept called uh, media concentration, and we're going to use uh, a media conglomerate called News Corporation as our main case study. Now when it comes to categorising different forms of media ownership, there are two main types of media companies. Firstly, there are public media companies, and these are media companies that exist uh, to provide uh, either a public service um, or their media companies that are owned by the government. So if we take the example of the BBC, the BBC is what we call a public service broadcaster which operates under uh, a royal charter. And this means that it's a regulated broadcaster which has providing a public service as its primary aim. And what this means is that the purpose of the BBC uh, is to meet perceived social needs rather than to produce a private profit. So under the terms of its Royal Charter, the BBC has to provide uh, a full range of programming uh, to meet audience needs for not just entertainment, but for education and information as well. So it's meant to cater for all interests and tastes, and it's meant to uh, cater for minorities and different regions. Uh, the BBC, by the way, is funded through an annual TV licence fee, uh, which is charged to all British households uh, using any type of equipment to receive uh, television broadcasts. And the level of the uh, licence fee is set annually by the British government and agreed by Parliament. Uh, Channel 4 is uh, a company that's actually owned by the government, um, but although it's publicly owned, it is run as if it was a private company. So its budgets are determined by uh, the sale of advertising. Now the other type of media company and the main focus of this screencast are private media companies. So these are commercial media companies privately owned by either uh, an individual or family or by a group of shareholders. And the primary purpose of uh, a private media company is to make profits for their owners and they usually make most of their money through subscription charges or through selling audiences to advertisers. Now at face value, the number of media outlets available to the general public uh, seems to have increased dramatically. So we've seen, uh, for example, uh, big increases in things like TV choice. However, critics such as McChesney argue that this choice and diversity is in reality quite superficial, that we have the appearance of choice, but in reality we have the control of the media market by a few large organisations essentially offering audiences uh, lots of different versions of the same kinds of products. Now questions about private ownership and control of the media have always been important to sociologists. And sociologists have used this term, media concentration, to describe a situation where a few companies own most of the mainstream media. For example, if we look at this particular graph, this is looking at media companies in America, we can see that in the early 1980s there were about 50 uh, companies uh, competing against each other. But by the early 2000s, this had reduced to just six. So these six companies own about 90% of the mainstream mass media uh, within the American market. So as we can see in this infographic, uh, most of the newspapers, magazines, uh, publishers, radio stations, TV stations within America are owned by only six corporations. And many commentators are concerned that the control of the market by a few large companies uh, might potentially have a detrimental effect on the range of services available to users. Now increasing media concentration uh, might be the result of a process called vertical integration. And this is where media companies attempt to control uh, every aspect of the media's production. 
For example, if we take the film industry, uh, you can get uh, a media company uh, which can own uh, the Hollywood studio, uh, the distribution companies, as well as the cinema showing the films. And this helps the media company to control every stage of the film industry, uh, from showing the film to the popcorn and soft drinks sold uh, within the um, cinemas. And media concentration can also be linked to a process of horizontal integration. And this is where uh, a media organisation develops by buying up competitors in the same section of the market. So a contemporary example of this would be an internet company such as Google uh, purchasing an internet company such as YouTube. So what is the motive for media concentration? Well, from the perspective of media owners, media concentration is only worthwhile if it can increase profits. So, for example, some media companies look for diversification. In other words, they look to operate in as many different media industries as possible in order to spread risk, in order to make sure uh, that all of their eggs uh, aren't placed in one basket. Another reason for media concentration is synergy. This is where uh, a big media company made up of lots of different divisions uh, can produce different versions uh, of the same product. So for example, a book can be turned into a film, into a DVD, into a video game, etc. Now the biggest private media companies are what we call media conglomerates. And conglomerates are companies made up of separate divisions, uh, each with distinct identities, operating in different sectors of the market. And they're most often formed through a process of mergers and acquisitions. Now currently the biggest media conglomerate in the world is the Walt Disney Company. And as you can see from this image, there are many different divisions that make up the Disney family. It isn't just the Walt Disney brand. And although this is a company that has its origins in America, uh, Disney is what we call a global media conglomerate because it operates in many countries in the world. In the context of the UK's media market, the most powerful global media conglomerate uh, of recent years has been Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. So you might recognise this image of Rupert Murdoch. Uh, News Corporation has many different interests within the UK media market, including in the newspaper industry and also in satellite broadcasting. Um, Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation are the biggest shareholder in Sky Television. However, News Corporation's ambitions to take full control of Sky Television uh, were down to blow uh, by the controversy surrounding the phone hacking scandal, uh, which centred on uh, the News of the World newspaper, um, newspaper that was part of uh, Murdoch's company. And you'll probably recognise this image. This is an image of the murdered schoolgirl, uh, Millie Dowler. Um, and it was uh, revealed by The Guardian that a private detective working for uh, the News of the World uh, hacked into the private voice file messages of this murdered schoolgirl. And this obviously caused uh, a lot of controversy. In America, News Corporation owned the cable news channel Fox News and the extreme right-wing bias of Fox News uh, within America has raised questions about uh, News Corporation's negative impact on democracy. So though Fox News uses the slogan fair and balanced, uh, most commentators would argue that Fox News uh, is not balanced, it's very partisan and is very heavily biased towards the main right-wing party uh, within America, the Republicans. Because so many of Rupert Murdoch's news organisations uh, reflect this kind of right-wing bias, uh, this raises some interesting questions about what happens uh, when one or two media conglomerates uh, dominate within a single market. And the important questions this raises include uh, whether or not these media organisations will present uh, a diversity of opinions, whether or not uh, big media organisations can exercise undue political influence and there are lots of accusations about 
uh, the influence that Murdoch has had on British party politics, and thirdly, uh, whether or not uh, big media organisations will be willing to present information uh, within the news that may be damaging to either their advertisers or to themselves. Now, despite the emphasis on media concentration within the sociological literature, there are several factors that suggest that the steady march of the media conglomerates towards complete domination of global markets may not be uh, inevitable. For example, the failure to make uh, very large corporations work effectively for the benefit of their shareholders has led to the decision to demerge certain media companies in recent years. For example, AOL, the internet provider and Time Warner have now gone their separate ways. And going back to our case study, News Corporation, because of the controversies surrounding the phone hacking scandal, uh, there are plans to break up News Corporation into two different companies. So one company dealing with uh, TV and film and the other uh, company dealing with newspapers and publishing. Also since the 1980s we've seen new uh, American players in the global media market. So we've seen the formation of startup companies engaged in computing and online activity. However, it could be argued that these corporations are trying to dominate uh, computer and internet-based media activities in much the same way that the older media conglomerates have tried to do so in the traditional media industries. Finally, the two most populous countries in the world, uh, China and India, have a rapidly growing middle class, uh, providing a home market large enough to sustain uh, large-scale media companies. And therefore, if we look at the future, uh, it's likely uh, to comprise a range of global media conglomerates, not simply the ones that have originated in America.